Oh, hello there, you lovely lot. Welcome back to another show here on Crafters TV. Uh, the next couple of hours are all about masterclass, where we really take some time uh, to demonstrate in depth a certain genre or type of product. And this one uh, is all going to be about mixed media. We've got some fabulous mixed media products in this show uh, from Crafters Companion, some uh, brilliant creative expressions items as well uh, for you too. There's absolutely loads in the show. Uh, don't forget as well, it is the 11th day of Craftmas, and that means every single order uh, placed that is over £10 or $20 will receive uh, the amazing Crafters Inspiration uh, magazine. It's an incredible magazine uh, filled with 60 different projects, but also uh, you're going to get loads of hardware in here as well. You're going to get some gorgeous stamps, dies, um, there's a embossing folder in there, loads of papers as well. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. All you need to do is make sure you've got £10 or dollars worth of products in your cart and that will be added at checkout for you to every single eligible order, which is awesome. I'm not here on my own for this incredible masterclass. Uh, we had a great play your crafts right earlier. Yes, I did win. I wasn't going to mention it. Uh, but Lily is back with me in the building. How are you, Lily? I'm good until that little comment. <laughs> <laughs> you had to remind me how hopeless I was. But no, I'm really, really good. And I'm so excited for this show. It's going to be an absolute cracker. So it I hope really you're going to enjoy it. It really, really is. And lots coming up in the show, isn't there? <gasps> Absolutely. We've got so, so much different things coming up. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of some of the samples that um, you can be creating when you get these amazing products home. So we've got a couple of sets of stencils on the show. And this is our everyday pattern stencils. Just one of those. So using it with some of your pigment inks, then using your embossing powders, your clear embossing powders over the top for that little bit of shine and that nice. raised effect. How fab does that look though? But super, super easy with the different colours onto there. How about using some of the other stencils we've got on the show? So our 7x7 seven seven pigment ink stencils. We had a sneaky little peek of these uh, on Play Crafts right this morning. And with this one, we've just picked out some of the different areas of the stencil using a couple of different colours of inks. These are our water reactive inks to give us a slightly more soft and muted effect but really really simple a lovely DL card design there really quick to create but how striking using your stencils then we've got some amazing cosmic shimmer and creative expression oh that's so cool show. how fun is he loads of fun and I believe his name is actually Horace Horace she, yeah oh. I think so yeah uh, we've got some fabulous, really, really um, fun stamps on the show from Creative Expressions. And we've just built up, we've actually decoupaged this um, stamped image. So stamping multiple times, colouring him, him in. We've got some fabulous colouring products on the show too, so watch out for those. But a really fun card for that one, something totally different. But what about going really quite mixed media? So nice. bringing in your seam bindings, cutting into your owl stamps. So you don't always have to use their stamps in their entirety building up all the colours, all the layers, using your paints, using your embossing powders, using your fine liners, your art liners to add that detail onto there, building up something really quite different there. How about going completely to the opposite end of the spectrum? We've got some fabulous paper cut dies on the show today as well from Creative Expressions. Really, really clean and simple. Quite a small little card there. So if you are into your smaller cards, these are going to work for you absolutely wonderfully. Not using them on the edge of your cards at all. Using them in the centre, in a frame. Adding in again some more of your fabulous Cosmic Shimmer products. And a really, really nice clean and simple card. And then finally, how about this, using some of your backgrounds, perhaps using bot botanical stains that we've got on the show. That's using, awesome. Oh, it's amazing, mm. isn't it? But really, really simple to create. We'll be doing stuff like this throughout the show. Just using one of the die cuts, a sentiment, a little bit of ribbon, and how fabulous and striking is that? But again, really quite easy to create with the fab products that we've got on today's show. Brilliant. Just a little uh, idea then of some of the things you're going to be seeing in the show. Loads of different incredible uh, items in the show. I would absolutely urge you to hit the Shop the Show button over on the website. Have a little look at everything uh, that is coming up. You can find that over on craftscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, any questions you've got, I understand that this masterclass, uh, maybe with a lot of you, a bit less familiar uh, with mixed media than paper crafting, you might have a lot of questions. Get those into me. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion if you are across on YouTube. Drop into the chat there uh, and leave me a comment. We're going to kick things off with the incredible 7x7 stencils. Uh, you had a little look at these earlier. They were very, very busy since then. Best price yet on these, which is fantastic. Saving you over £13, almost $17 here. Uh, really lovely designs. All very different as well in their design. You've got the elegant trellis there. It's almost like a chain mail, which is fantastic. Those gorgeous abstract hearts. You've also got the scattered foliage, which is this one here. This one is your cute florals. We also have the abstract swirls. You've got the rosebud floral. That is your beautiful butterflies. 
and you will also receive this one here as well, which is your polka dots. 27.92, 37.52. Everyone that orders these as well, remember, will get uh, Crafters Inspiration Magazine number one included in there, free of charge, as part of our 11th day of Craftmas. Uh, but right, I'm so excited. We have some amazing demos in the earlier Play Your Craft Rights, uh, Lily. So I'm really oh. excited to see what you create uh, in this two-hour masterclass. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited. This is going to be an absolute cracker of a show. I know we've got so many fab products. We're just going to have a little bit of a play, which for me is what mixed media is all about. It's all just having a play with all the lots of different products we've got already in our crafty stash, but bringing in the new stuff as well. I'm going to start off with some of our fabulous stencils that we've got on the show today. So I'm using our 7x7 seven seven inch um, pigment ink stencils. Now don't let the name deceive you, they're not just for pigment inks, they can be used with any of your inks, not just inks either, spritzes, your paints, all sorts you can be doing with these. But I'm starting off with the Elegant Trellis and like Joe said this reminds me a little bit of chain mail. Mm. It could be really really quite industrial, really masculine, it could go quite grungy. I mean on the front of the packaging we've got quite clean and simple design so it's completely up to you how you use these depending on your style. But like I say, they are a really, really good size stencil. They are seven by seven inches. And I promise you, yours will come to you clean, not like mine. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been playing with this one last night. Who knows? <laughs> But we've got to remember that even though they are 7x7 seven seven inch stencils, which are great for our larger scale projects, what about scrapbook pages, home decor, lots of things like that. They're not just for our big projects. We don't always have to use the full stencil in its entirety. So I've cut down um, a piece of cardstock. It's about five inches square. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my stick and spray and I'm just going to spray this over the back of my stencil. So you don't want too much on there um, so that it sticks too fast, but you want enough that it's going to stay in place. You can use your low tack um, repositionable tapes if you prefer. I just find it's easier with a spray. Just means it's going to stay in position a little bit easier. So just burnishing that down. Hopefully not too much glue on there, but hopefully enough that it stays. But if it doesn't, at the end of the day, we'll find another technique to utilise. Again, what mixed media is all about with just playing. Now I'm going to start off just by inking through this. So this is perhaps the simplest way to use stencils. Perhaps the most common and the easiest. But I'm going to be using some of my Spectrum Noir Harmony inks. And I'm starting off with crushed velvet. So I'm thinking, let's go a little bit crafter's purple, eh? Why nice, not? Nice, very <laughs> on brand. Oh, yes. Very corporate colours. I have to say, I love pink and purple. I've got to be a couple of my favourite colours. So it's always you... Purple is the perfect mix between warm and cool tones. Yeah, it's a funny one because you compare purple with both gold and silver and it works wow. so it's, it's funny with some colors they're definitely cool or definitely warm and mm. so with cooler colors you tend to want to pair them with silver and with more warm colors you tend to want to pair them with gold whereas pink and purple you can get away with either which is quite nice it makes our crafting life a little mm. bit easier but yeah i love a bit of purple and you can see how easily using one of my spectrum noir round blending tools you can see how easily these um, water reactive inks actually blend onto there and because I've got my stencil actually adhered down using my repositionable spray it means it's not going to move well having said that it'll probably fly across the desk <laughs> now <laughs> so, spoke too spoke too soon but at the moment it's staying in position and can you see I'm just going in certain areas I'm not going all over the design I'm just picking out um, sort of, I was going to say random areas, I'm not great at random things, I like to have a little bit of structure and order, so I am sort of in an evenly spaced pattern, but if you want to go for random that's going to work fabulously too. And then I'm going to change inks, and I'm going to go for, oh let's go for pink, let's go for pink tulip, and again we're with our water reactive dye inks. So these inks are, have been designed to react with water as the name suggests, so We'll see that in play a little bit later, but they are perfect for inking through stencils like this. They're perfect for um, blending, just like we're doing here. So going in with the pink, starting to fill those gaps in. 
Fabulous. Lots of people saying hello. Diana is saying hi to everyone. Uh, the lovely Lynn uh, is in as well. Who else got here? Elizabeth is in a windy Watertown, New York. Cindy's in from Belgium as well. Kathy's in also from a very damp Northern Ireland. We're very international today, Lily. Yeah, it's fab. I'm loving Ooh. it. Yeah. Um, I, I, can I just say I love to hear what the weather's doing where everyone I is. I do. That <laughs> is, I think that's the most British thing ever, isn't it? Is, it is, isn't it? Talking about tea and talking about the weather. Absolutely. It's what we're I, good at. <laughs> I do hope everyone is staying safe as well. I know there's been yeah. some horrible storms uh, over in the US. So uh, yeah. our thoughts are with everyone over there that's affected. Yeah. Um, Debbie says, um, good morning from Albany, New York. Raining here. You'll be pleased to know, Lily. Oh, um, just like here. <laughs> we can just hear like it rattling here. on the roof. It, it's it terrible. Really is. It is raining cats and dogs as we sat there. Uh, Evelyn's in from uh, beautiful Colorado. Lena's in from Denmark. She's trying to watch CCTV and the football at the same time. Ooh. A woman after Johnny's heart there. Uh, Send Paper Hugs is in again from Ohio. Hello. So pumped for this masterclass. And Lena says, I love the mixed media shows. I learned so many new things. Absolutely. I think mixed media shows are something we don't do all that much of, Lily, aren't they? So it's really no. lovely when they come around. Yeah, it's definitely one of those. When they come around, sort of snap up the products, get them in your carts, get them in your baskets and get playing quite frankly because it's so much fun i mean i must say i don't get enough time as much time um as i'd like to do mixed media but when i do my goodness may get completely lost it's fabulous right so we've built up our ink on so we've got color onto there but let's let's utilize the fact that these are water reactive dye so let's get one of our spritzers so i'm using my spectrum noir spritzers and i always like i said earlier in the um, play crafts right show i always spray it on the back of my hand just to get sort of a gauge of how much water roughly is going to come out and then we're just we're going to spray over just a few few spritzes over our background and then we're going to take a piece of kitchen towel Paper would you towel? get a different effect if you remove the stencil and then spritz? Absolutely. So what that would do is you'd sort of lose a little bit of definition from your stencil. Okay. So it would give you more of a, of a blended effect. Whereas this is going to, most of it will stay clear where the stencil wasn't, if okay. that makes sense. So another brilliant effect, but just a different one. So again, it's another thing to try, which is always fabulous and exciting. I'm going to add a little bit more water onto that because I think we can pull a little bit more of the colour away. So again, it's just having a play. Um, if you're not happy with something, just keep going until you are. Keep adding the layers and keep experimenting. So that's that for that little stage. What just, I'm going to do oh, now... I'd always say is just make sure you know what's in your spritzer bottles. <gasps> I used to have this, um, I had this situation where I, when I was worked at Creighton Craft Lily yeah. uh, and Hannah Oxbury, one of my <gasps> running jokes were, was with her that whenever we worked together before the show, I would take a spritzer out of her bag and then when she wasn't looking, she'd <gasps> turn around and I'd spritz it at her. Oh. And then one day I did it and she went, that was alcohol. <laughs> oh, oh, so scary. always check you've got the right spritzer is what I've learned. Always, 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 always. That was definitely water. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I hope so. Now, making sure that that is really well dried because we need it dry for our next technique. So I've just blotted it off with a piece of kitchen towel. That should be dry enough. If it's not, we're just going to get a different effect, which is not a problem at all. Uh, like I said, just a different effect. So now I'm going to bring in some of the stamps that we've actually got on the show. I've not had a little look at these just yet, but we've got some of the Creative Expressions Vintage Botanicals collection, and I've chosen the French script. So that is coming in your fantastic bundle that we've got on the show today. And I'm going to do again, you might have seen me do this earlier on Playcrafts, right? It's my, what I like to call my stamping hand technique. Right. <laughs> so we're inking up our stamp. We're not popping it on an acrylic block, nothing like that. Straight in our hand. Then we're just going to go over the top of our stencil. So we're actually stamping through our stencil. Wow. Yeah, so you can use your stencils with so many different things. I think we forget. We tend just to go for inking. Perhaps we emboss them. Perhaps we use our spritzers from time to time. But I think we sort of, um, we forget that we can do all these techniques. So we can actually stamp through our stencil. And I'm actually doing some of the second generation. I'm just keeping going until I've almost run out of ink on my stamp and then I can re-ink re a little bit. So I wasn't inking up my whole stamp, I was just inking up areas. I'm just stamping on areas, I'm not worrying too much about it at all, uh, but I think I am quite happy with that. So this is one of the best parts of stenciling, I've got to say. We're going to remove our stencil, so anchoring it down with one hand and this is where we find out if we have got too much um, adhesive on our stencil or not. <laughs> But this is looking good so just peel our stencil back just gently imagine you're pulling a plaster off pull it back and then you can see we've got that reveal 
So we've got our ink onto there. We've got some of the water. We've got some of the scripts sh showing through. So we've got lots and lots of different effects. Really just lovely when it's um, stamped over the stencil. So yes. It's a great way of using it. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So it's only in the areas where the stencil wasn't. So it's not all over the background. So it gives you really quite an interesting effect. Now, if you wanted that to be a little bit more diluted, if you didn't want this de design to be quite so prominent, you could then spritz over the top and that would make it bleed out all a little bit more. Right. Shall we give that a little go? See how that, yeah, let's. that looks? Why not, eh? See if this makes a big difference and then again just dabbing it off oh if you're wondering why i'm making that strange noise i'm just shaking my metallic ink pots up so i can show you the colors <laughs> thinking why is joe rattling over there <laughs> he's brought his maracas out he's having a little party. Yeah, I am. <laughs> why not so can you see then that's diluted our script a little bit more which gives us even more of a soft effect onto there so it's completely up to you depending on what sort of effect you're wanting to get with these something a little bit different the one i was playing with last night completely different colorway so i've gone with my greens and my blues and turquoises just gives you a completely different effect onto there now we can lay this up into a card so we're going to go for a really really quite simple card so i've gone for some black card stock just to really make that um, colour pop. So it's going to make our lovely pink and purple tones pop. And it's going to make this really stand out from the background. So just add in some of my, if it's going to come out at the end, I've got a block nozzle. Oh, nothing worse. Oh no. Oh, just remove that from the top and we should be good to go. I'm using my Colal all, all Purpose. We've actually got this as part of our um, Get It deal this week with your card and your adhesives. So I love this for all my matting and layering. Any, any of my flat gluing is absolutely perfect. So if I lay that over the top, just a small bit of black showing. We don't want too much. We don't want it to overtake and overpower um, that design that we've built up using the stencil and the stamps, but just enough to make that really pop and stand out. Uh, Cindy wants to know how you've got such clean hands and fingers with <gasps> all these gorgeous inky, all this gorgeous uh, inky you do. Unfortunately, they, they look a lot cleaner on screen than they do <laughs> in real life. I went to, um, to the bathroom during the break and I had a look at my hands and they're all green. I thought, oh, oh dear. No. <laughs> yes, and Johnny's saying in my ear and I did set the alarm off. Did yes. you in the office? Yes, so I walked through oh. to the other part of the was office. Was it this morning or this afternoon? Um, it was this afternoon, yeah. Oh, right. So I walked through um, to go to use the kitchen up through the other part of the office and I didn't realise the door was alarmed and I set the alarm off. Oh dear, you're not the first, you certainly won't be the last to do it. Yeah, I'll probably end up doing it again next time I'm here by accident, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was a little Imagine bit again at five o'clock. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> so I'm just popping that onto my card base. This is about a six by six inch card base. So a nice size card, not massive, but allows us to see a lot of that gorgeous design. And I've stamped a sentiment. This is from the uh, Creative Expressions collection, the vintage botanicals that we've got on the show. So just showing how everything works together. We've used some of the stamps from the vintage botanicals, then we've used our stencils from our fabulous pigment ink collection that we've got on the show today. And again, matting and layering that onto our thin black border, just to keep that flow, that continuity from the background into the foreground. And then if you saw Play Your Crafts Right this morning, you might have seen me have a little bit of a battle with a uh, foam and a roll. So I'm not going back to that. I'm mm. not being um, defeated again. And we're going with the foam pads. So just to give us a little bit of lift so we can lift our sentiment up off of our background, just to make it stand out a little bit more and set it apart from that lovely background that we've built up. I'm just adding a few foam pads onto the back of here. Lots of love coming in for these demonstrations. Lily, uh, Elizabeth says, Lily, I'm loving your demos. Oh, thank um, you so much. That's lovely. Uh, Aisha's great idea, stamping over the stencil, not seeing that before. Uh, and Colette says, uh, just awesome technique, Lily. That looks awesome. Oh, thank you. But think you could be doing this with any of your stamps. So lots of these stamps within the um, actual collection that we've got, the vintage botanicals, a lot of those work really, really well for, you, for your background. So the lovely Hessian stamp that would work really, really well. But how quick and simple mm. was that to create? You could be inking around your sentiment with some matching inks. You could be adding more embellishments, but it doesn't need it. It can be really, really simple. If you need a quick card, if you want to get a little bit inky, dabble in mixed media just a little bit, that's going to be a perfect sort of card for you to create. 
But what a great starting point for a lot of people that haven't tried mixed media before. A lot of people out there own stamps, own stencils already in sentiment and would be able to create something like that. Let me take you through the eight designs then that you've got in here. Remember, is the best ever price you've had on this, which is fantastic. So in here, you've got the elegant trellis. You also have the love hearts there. This one here is the scattered foliage. Then we also have the cute florals. That's your abstract swirls. You will get the rosebud floral. Uh, you'll also get in here the beautiful butterflies and then the polka dots as well. 34.90 or 46.90. Uh, if you want to get your hands on those, of course, make sure you're using that Club Inspired discount. And remember, every single order over £10 or $20 uh, today will have uh, a free Crafters Inspiration number one included in their first issue, which is fantastic. Uh, 60 different uh, projects in there and a whole host of crafty goodies as well. Let's have a look now at the uh, metallic ink pots that we've got uh, available for you. I'll take you through the cards. It's a really lovely co uh, collection here these are beautiful absolutely loaded uh, full of mica and you can really see I was giving a bit of a shake up they sort of settled a little bit but look at all that gorgeous lustrous color that you've got in there this one here this one is your antique pearl you will also get uh, the ancient bronze in there as well this one hit beautiful deep red color on this next one it's your vintage satin uh, that you can see just here just gorgeous so much ink in these as well 30 mils in each one of these which is absolutely loge that's your burnished copper that you can see just there then you've also got your aged copper the next one here is your i tell you i think i need to go and get my glasses redone this is your antique bronze you'll also get the pewter which is a beautiful beautiful sort of really dark gray color and then finally you'll also get uh, the tarnished silver uh, within that as well. You get all eight of those. You've got a brilliant saving of £14 or $20. Platinum members, 33.52, 47.92. Something else I want to talk to you about as well are these Fuzzy Friends. Um, these are amazing. Uh, they're from Jane Gill uh, and the Woodware brand of Creative Expressions. Uh, Jane's lady I've had the pleasure of working with uh, previously. Such a lovely lady and brings us some really, really uh, fun stamps. I love these. I think a lot of people out there would love the idea of doing sort of Zentangle style work, but maybe don't have the hand for it or the eye for it. These are sort of helping you out with that. You've got brilliant names in here. So this is Horace the Owl um, there as well. This one here is your, that's um, Hugo that you've got there. This one here is Bar Lamb. And then you've also got Daisy uh, within there as well. Really cool. Love that you get little embellishing elements and sentiments within there as well. So you can really help to build these up. Great price on those. 17.60, 25.60 if you are a Platinum member. They're just a lot of fun, those ones, which I think uh, is quite cool. Any questions you've got, please get them into me. Uh, Audrey says, please, please put Lily on a regular rotation. She is as lovely as her name and quite an excellent teacher. Oh, thank you there so you much. Are. That's How lovely. lovely. How lovely is that? Yeah, it's lovely to be here. It's uh, just brilliant. So just thank you so much. Just awesome <laughs> techniques, uh, Lily. It looks great, says Coletta as well. These stamps, Lily, are just fun, <gasps> aren't they? Just to look, when you look at some of the, I know the sample you had earlier, they just look awesome. They are absolutely fabulous. They are so much fun. I think for me personally, they sort of fill a little bit of a gap that I've got in my crafty stash. They're those fun cards, but they're easy to create as well because the artwork really does speak for itself. You can just literally stamp them in black ink onto white card and it's going to look absolutely fabulous. They're just great. So, so much fun. And the mm. names themselves just are brilliant, aren't they, really? <laughs> Mm, absolutely. If you want to grab them, £22 or $32. Um, and great that we've still got four of these uh, in stock for you. Right, what are we going to create with these then, Lily? Right, so we're going to do a little bit of watercolour in using these. So we've got some fantastic Cosmic Shimmer products on the show today. And you can use them for so, so many different things. So yeah, you can be doing your fantastic backgrounds. We showed you some of the brilliant backgrounds you can be doing at the start of the show. They're really easy to create, but you can also be painting with these. A lot of them are water-based mediums, which are brilliant because you can all mix and match them. You can use them all together, which is absolutely so much fun. I love painting. I love water-based mediums because you can just get playing, and that's, that's what I love, really. So I'm going to start off with the watercolour inks, and these are not just any old watercolour inks. These are pearlescent watercolour inks. Ooh. So oh, Yeah, if you think watercolours are good, wait till they're pearlescent. They are wow. fabulous. They've got such shimmer and shine to them as well. They are absolutely brilliant. 
So, and even though they are pearlescent, we can still definitely paint with them. It doesn't stop us from paint with, painting with them. It just gives us that gorgeous luster. So I've taken the gorgeous floral stamp and I've stamped it onto um, some watercolour card just because I'm going to be watercolouring. It's going to give us... Um, it's going to give us a much better effect when we're using our water-based mediums. The card isn't going to buckle or cockle. It's going to sort of stay perfect when we are using our water-based mediums. And a little birdie has also told me that they're also part of our fantastic um, Get It Deal this week. Our watercolour card is in there. Amazing. Oh. I love that you keep referring to this little birdie, even though <laughs> the little birdie is in fact you, because you put the deals together. Absolutely. I have to say, I did put this Get It deal together myself. <laughs> I have to say, because for me, it's everything that I need. It's everything that I need to stock up on. It's the things that I use the most. It's my glues. It's my essential car stock. It's everything I need. So, yeah, <laughs> this little birdie is me. <laughs> So I've stamped this out and I've used um, my waterproof ink from Spectrum Noir because I am going to be using a water-based medium. Now these pots, I know they're absolutely gorgeous, but they are also functional. They're going to look fab on your shelves. So we've got this, this delivery system is. I'm, I'm looking at it over here and I've just pressed something and it's it pumped and I thought, oh, yeah. no, I'm going to squirt it on myself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's brilliant. They are really easy to use. So if you press that little button on top first, yeah, and then you screw your lid off. Yeah. What you'll find by pressing that button, all it's done is it's loaded ah. the ink into that little dropper. <gasps> That's very clever, isn't it's it? It's so clever. I've never seen anything like this before. They're absolutely That's amazing. fab. I know. I was like, oh, that's genius. Why, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> and then we can just ah. pop some of that out. Yeah. Just press the button and it loads up your little pipette type Yeah, so you thing. leave it closed, give it a couple of pumps. And it's loaded and then up. when you open it up, the pipette has already... The pipette's already filled itself, and then use the same button to just dispense it. That's magic. I, I know. love that. I know. Who thought you don't of get that? Any, you don't have to take it out, put it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, because you know what it's like. I'd be oh. wearing it by the end of oh, you know, I know. a few And if minutes. you have to pour them out, quite frankly, you can forget it because you'll have poured it all over your desk. Yeah. And it's I love like, that. I know. Absolutely brilliant. Why didn't we think of that, Joe? Anyway, I'm adding some water to my pearlescent ink that is in my little mixing palette. Just a little Spectrum Noir, of course, mixing palette. And we're going to start watercolouring. So what colour is this you're using, Lily? Good question. It is the blue one. Oh, it's the one I can't say. Uh, Cerulean? Cerulean. I was going to say the blue Carolean, one. but that's not what it is, is it? Cerulean. That blue one, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. It reminds me of sort of the sea in a beautiful hot country, I'm thinking. A Greek island. Oh, the sea. yes. As we listen to the rain outside, we're just dreaming. A gyros in one hand, a mythos in the other. Oh, oh I yeah. can see oh, it now. I'm there. Joe, I'm there. <laughs> you can get into a zone when you're colouring, but yeah, I'm, I'm there. So I'm starting off with just quite a watery wash over the petals. Now, even though I've added quite a lot of water, you can see it's um, diluted the colour quite a bit, but we're still getting a lot of that pearlescence shining through, and that just goes to show quite how packed with the pearlescent shimmer these watercolour paints are. They are absolutely stunning. So perhaps you already have watercolour paints in your stash. I have to say, I have a few. As you might, might not imagine <laughs> with me being a, a passionate crafter, I have a lot of watercolour and water-based mediums. But these, the fact that they've got pearlescence in there, for me, it's an absolute need. Absolutely love these. And they're so easy to use, like you can see here. Literally just painting, really easy, using um, just a paintbrush, a bit of water and your watercolour inks. Filling in that colour really quite quickly. And notice I'm always turning my paper, rather than turning my wrists and getting in an awkward position, turning my paper every single time, just allowing me to lay down that colour really, really easily. This is sort of like my, my base coat, my first layer of colour, if you like. We can go in and add shading, we can add shadow, light and shade onto there. As we would with any normal watercolour ink, it's just got that pearlescence into there as so well. So is this the pure ink going down uh, at the moment? Is this No, this has been watered down. So I've added a little bit into my palette and then I've added some water as well. Fab. So if it was pure, it would be a lot more intense. Um, so this is quite watered down, but like I say, we can still see that shimmer and shine onto there. So it does, does kind of look like it's not really being watered down a lot, mm, to be honest. The pigment holds really well, doesn't it? Even it's with the water fabulous. added. Yeah, it just goes to show the quality. So we've got our base layer down. And then we can go in and add oh, a little... Pam says, 
Lily, you are so cute. That's all she oh. says. Just that. How nice is that? Oh, thank you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. <gasps> Did you see that when it went into the palette? Oh my what gosh, happened? it's absolutely got it so pearly. It literally mm. looks like a real gemstone. <gasps> it's amazing. Oh, love this stuff. Then I'm going to go back in. Now I'm using the pure ink so you can see uh, how much more intense that is. How shiny and shimmery is that? It's absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh. Really getting that shine coming through. Shiny. Shiny. It certainly is. So I'm adding a little bit more of the ink at the very top um, of the petal, sort of where the, the shadow and the shading would be. We're thinking at the base it would be more pinched in and then it would go a little bit lighter as we worked out towards the edge of the petals. So again, we can shade with these really quite easily. And once the first layer is dry and you go back in over the top, you're going to get even more um, dimension and shade onto there. So just filling that in, adding in our shadow, and it just gives it an even more impressive finish to have that shading, to have that pearlescence onto that. You don't have to be an amazing colorist to work with. These are incredibly forgiving. And if you do go out the side of the lines, it sort of adds to this watercolory effect. I think mm. when you're working with a water-based medium, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be really, really crisp and in, in the lines. So, so forgiving. Should we go in with another color now? Shall we go for, well, I can say this one, Radiant Orchid. <laughs> So again, we're going to this pop. looks, oh. the pearlescence in this one looks oh. amazing. Oh, so I've just pressed my button, take the lid off, and then we press our button again. Oh my gosh, the colour on this is absolutely stunning. So we're going to go in this time. Again, we're watering it down to start with. Wow, wow what that's a colour. Wow, that's an colour, isn't it? And then we're going to go in onto the top. So we're colouring the centre of the flower. Uh, is this watercolour card, did you say? It is, absolutely, yeah. So that's going to take your watercolour inks um, much better than a stamping card would, just because it can handle the water a little bit better without sort of peeling or cockling. You know when you use the wrong cardstock and you add water and it starts all sort of coming up a little bit and coming away, you don't really get that with watercolour card. So it does give you the best results when you are using any of these water-based mediums. So that's our centre done. Then we can actually watercolour with some of the intense pigment stains that we've got on the show. So, for the leaves, we don't necessarily want those to be actually pearlescent. So if we bring in some of our intense pigment stains, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to add these to our palette. So just dropping out a couple of drops of the ink. And like the name suggests, these are really, really intense. So you don't need a lot of these at all in order to get really, really deep and intense colour onto your projects. So I'm adding a little bit of water and the colour I've gone for is citrus lime. And then we're going to just paint in our leaves. So we can paint in these in exactly the same way as we did with our... Oh, that one's only 275. <gasps> 275? I know. Good is, that a, is, that, is that a mistake, Lily? <laughs> I don't know, but that seems quite ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I just, there was, that, was a, that was a sharp exhale of breath there. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not my mistake, but if it is, <laughs> well, then take advantage. Is that, is, uh -oh. that is the price on, on the website as well? Johnny's checking. Well, if that's on the website, that the price, yeah. then that's it. There's not a lot I can do, I'm not afraid. Much I'd say <laughs> grab them while you can. Up. For sure, because although they're not huge bottles, because they are intense, so intense, you only have to use the tiniest bit. Yeah, as well, I mean, storage with something like this, Lily, what sort of good practice um, with, with products along these lines? All I'd say is store them upright yep. and out of direct sunlight. Brilliant. So I tend to just have them in my crafty cupboards. Nothing particularly special. You don't need any sort of technical whatever, just out of direct sunlight, somewhere not really, really hot or really, really cold just in a cupboard will be absolutely fine. Amazing. Yeah, and can you see with the top area here, it's bled into the blue because I worked while the blue was wet and then I added in the wet, wet pink, what will happen is that will bleed and it'll give you a really, really interesting wet in wet effect. If you don't want that, make sure that your blue is dry before you add in your color next to it. But it just gives you a really nice effect and shows how easily you can Sur actually blend. Surprise how even the coverage is, because I know a lot of liquid inks can look very, very patchy, can't they? Or uneven, you can see your brush strokes in them. 
With this, it seems to give you a really good even finish. Yeah, absolutely. They give you a seamless, seamless coat of colour onto there. It's so, so smooth. If you want to be adding texture, using special effects, then absolutely can do. But if you want that smooth lay down of colour, like we've got here, then very, very easily you can do that. They're so, so easy to paint with. and can give you such a lovely effect. So we've got the pearlescent watercolour inks on the actual flower. And then we've got the intense pigment stains on the leaves. And it just gives you that little bit of a point of difference. And when that dries, that shimmer and shine is going to stand out even, even more. Really bold, vibrant colours. I absolutely love that. Lots of people um, loving that. Uh, Aisha says, uh, oh, Aisha wants us to see how those pipettes work again, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, of course, yeah. So the pearlescent watercolour inks, they come to you in this fabulous little bottle like this. So you're getting 20 mils. So on the top, they've got this button. At first, I didn't realise it was a button. I just thought it was part of the design of the, the, of the bottle, but it is actually a button. So if you just press that in, you can press it in once, twice. It's totally up to you. Then just screw your lid off, just like you would normally. And then can you see it's picked up some of the ink in that little pipette? Then if you hold that over your palette or wherever you want to dispense that ink onto, and then press that button, and it will dispense that ink into your Fantastic. palette. Fantastic. It means you're not wasting it, you're not picking loads up in a pipette, and then also you're not, you know, because sometimes with something like this, I mean, you need such a small amount. How often have you got ink in the pipette that then you wash away? With this, each individual bottle has its own pipette. I think it's an ingenious idea. It's brilliant. It absolutely minimises waste, and that's what we're all about, and it just makes our crafting so much easier. It's so simple, but it's not at the same time. It's absolutely mm. brilliant. Amazing. Mm. Right, in order to finish this off, I've just got a sentiment. So this is from exactly the same set. So within the set, yes, you're getting the fabulous flower. But we've completely filled that stamp set. So we've got our sentiment. We've got some little extra embellishments that you can use to build up your own backgrounds or to use as embellishments if you would prefer. So just those finishing touches, it's not just about the flower, although that is the fabulous main focal point of the whole stamp set. We've also got the little extras as well that are just going to finish your projects off, whether they be a card like we're using here, or whether they be home decor, scrapbook pages, um, home decor pieces for your walls, art journals, whatever it might be, you've got something that's going to work in this collection. Then I'm going to adhere our stamped and coloured piece onto a thin border of black, again just to make the design pop like we did with the first card we popped together. And again, of course, I'm using my Collal All Purpose. It's perfect for your matting and layering, for any of your flat gluing. I find that with certain um, wet glues like your PVAs, you can get a little bit of bubbling. The card can perhaps warp a little bit because of the water content. I find that that's not the case at all with this Collal. Even when I'm working with thinner papers, it still holds its shape brilliantly and I don't come back to the card half an hour later and found it's bent round like a banana because of the wet yeah. glue. Yeah, what <laughs> is it in glue that sometimes does that? When you glue, you know, especially two <laughs> sheets of paper that seem to be the same size, you come back and they're, they're like bananas, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's just the water content. Right. So um, cheaper glues will tend to have more water in. So they've got less of sort of the sticky stuff and more of the water that's basically just a filler. Right. Um, so you don't really want a lot of water in your glue. Because this is actually a solvent-based glue, we don't have that. We don't have a lot of the carrier, the filler, the stuff that, that basically doesn't do what we want it to do. Um, so it just means that you're going to get that perfect um, bond without all the warping, without all the bananaing, if you like. Right. It's going give to give you that perfect um, effect every single time. Because it's so frustrating when you've put together a really quite nice card and you come back to it half an hour later and it, it's basically ruined. It is, com it's really gutting. It's happened to all of us, but with a glue like this, I found it doesn't happen, which is brilliant. So adding our sentiment to the bottom right, just to finish it off, fill in a little bit of that white space. You can take even more time at home, watercoloring your image, but just how quick and easy was that to put together? And you can do that with any of your stamps in that collection. Is that any dry of friends. Not quite dry. It's getting towards, but you can see as it's drying more and more, the pearlescent mm. sort of sheen is coming up. So by the end of the show, that should be dry uh, and it's going to look even, even better. It's one of those, it gets better with age. It does. <laughs> gets better as it dries, <laughs> which is always fabulous. What is, the t what is the film where he deletes people's memory and he just goes like this, boop, boop, and it deletes their memory? Is it Men in Black? Oh. That's what these remind me of. <laughs> They're like memory erasers of crafters. I think he's got these little silver buttons in like, boop, boop. Maybe that's where they got the idea from. Maybe that's... You never maybe. know. 
<laughs> they will be called Men in Sparkle or something like that, I'm sure. Or People in Sparkle. Oh, uh, let me take you through then the different um, colours. Uh, that we've got in here. There's some beautiful, beautiful designs in here. Uh, I've got six of them just here, but you can see here the colour. You get a good idea with this little swatch on the side here of what they're going to look like. They are beautifully lustrous. Uh, that one is your, um, colour is that? That's your Lemon Glacier, which is beautiful. You've also got the Red Sunset, which is this one here. And again, you can see that, that little swatch on the side gives you an idea. You catch it in the light and you look at how beautifully lustrous that is. Uh, this one here is your Radiant Orchid, uh, as you can see. Again, really lovely deep purple colour. Then this one here is your, this is your Ray of Sunshine. Uh, and again, really beautifully lustrous. Then we also have the Holly Green there, uh, which is that beautiful pearlescent one. Again, a gorgeous colour. And this one, I mean, I'm loving this one. This is probably my favourite of them. Well, how do we say this one again, Lily? Cerulean yeah. blue. I'm not sure if that's right, but that's what we're going with today. <laughs> Cerulean, Cerulean blue. I was going to say Carolean. I don't think that's right at all. But, it might uh, be we'll right. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> what was that, Charlotte? Because it looks a little bit Carolean. You can see how I've got C E R. U L E A N. Cerulean. Cerulean, apparently. Um, I wouldn't take my word as uh, authority on it. I'd have just made it up. <laughs> well, you may be, but I mean, as long as you say it with conviction, Lily, no one will oh, question yeah. you, honestly. Um, who was it just uh, was asking a minute ago? Hannah Hicks says, I love the stamp. Where is it from? It's from the collection that's actually available on the show for you from a uh, woodware um, collection from Creative Expressions. It's your fuzzy friends, you've got four in here. So you've got Horace, which is this one just here. Uh, this one here, I, lo I love their eyes. I don't know what it is about <laughs> their eyes, it really makes me chuckle. That's Hugo. Then you've got Bar Lamb, which is this one here, uh, which is so much fun. Uh, and then finally the one that you've just seen Lily using with, that is the Daisy one there. It's very, very busy across lots of different uh, items on our show at the moment. I want to give you an opportunity to check out. Uh, whilst you do that, let's share with you all the details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. 
We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us. You give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up. I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV. Create every day. Very, very busy show. Lots of you taking the opportunity to check out there. Uh, question from Mary, Lily. Uh, says, will Lily be showing the pearl tint? So I seem to have missed them being shown. They're always on the shop to show, but I don't know how they work. Yeah, we can have a little look at them, those later in the show, definitely. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, keep sure. tuned for that then, Mary. We're going to go back to this. We're going to go and have a little look at the Botanicals collection. Very busy when we um, previewed it in the earlier Play Your Crafts Right show. A really beautiful uh, selection of different stamps and dyes within here. Really lovely styles and sizes. Uh, you've seen Lily using the uh, French script, which is this one uh, just here, that beautiful rubber stamp over a stencil. You're also going to get the wild flowers in here in the A6 size. You then get the A5 size with your Nature Finds. Really nice size, these, and all disconnected as well, which I think is brilliant. So uh, if you want to sort of layer those up, use those to really build up a scene, you've got the option to do that. Down the front, then, we've got dates from the past down here, which is fantastic, really wonderful for journaling. I think scrapbook pages are going to look incredible using that as well. The next one we've got here, this is your uh, butterfly butterfly walk that you've got just here again really great for texture lots of textural stamps in there and then two die sets within this one uh, so that first one here this is your uh, rustic honeycomb you're also going to get the tattered tags in there as well a really great collection a great little saving on there for you as well 5503 as a platinum member remember every single order over 10 pounds or 20 dollars placed today will get a free copy of crafters inspiration uh, edition one included uh, in there as well which is awesome any other questions i've got i know we don't do these mixed media shows all that often so uh, you might have some questions about how the products work uh, the kind of things that you can use them on uh, lily is here to answer all of those for you so get them into me crafters tv over on facebook crafters companion uh, if you are across on youtube uh, but what would you like to share with us next lily right should we have a little look at the vintage botanicals collection yes i think we ought to this is an absolutely stunning collection it's one of those you just want to play with. You want to play and play and play and play. And I must say, I love it. There's so many elements in there that I think you're going to be going back to time and time again. The tags. Should we just have a little look at the tags to start with? <gasps> I have to say, I am obsessed with tags. I love a tag die. Love using tags, yeah, to make tags, but also as an embellishment, as a topper onto my cards. And you can see when we take one that's already been die cut, it's got that almost ripped effect edge to it. So it's not a straight edge. It's going to give you that lovely sort of authentic and natural feel to all your projects. And you get in several different sizes, but not only are you getting the tags in a range of different sizes, you're also getting these and you might wonder to start with what those actually are. But those are the elements you add around the ring. It's like your whole reinforcers like you'd have on proper tags. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's that attention to detail that makes makes it such a fantastic set of dies is that finishing touch onto your project so if you just die cut those separate and you have ones which have that ruffled edge again or you've got the straight edge option then just stick them around the edge of your hole that you've got on your tag and it's just going to finish it off beautifully but we're going to bring in some of the other fabulous products that we've got on the show we've got some of the lovely botanical stains on the show now these are fairly new ish within the past few months but they are absolutely fabulous to work with so we've got a slightly different bottle um to our watercolor rinks that we had earlier and the color that i'm working with now is a blueberry these now, these look like they look like food coloring bottles <laughs> to me these ones they do don't they yeah. so we've got like a pipette 
the top. And all we do to use these is we screw off the lid, just like so. And then can, can you see we've got our pipette? That'll be full of ink. And then all you do is just squeeze the pipette. So I'm working on a piece of, this is watercolour card, because this is a water-based medium and we're going to be adding a little bit of water onto here. We're working onto watercolour card. And there's so many ways you can use these um, vintage botanical stains. But what we're going to do to start with, with this particular technique, is we're taking one of our spray misters and we're just going to start off by gently misting all over our piece of watercolour card. Can you see that's bent a little bit, but not to worry, as it dries, it will flatten out. So taking a little bit of this blueberry, and then we're just going to squeeze the pipette and let some of the ink run onto there, just like so. And then we're going to take, if there's not enough ink on there, just dip the pipette back in, squeeze your, your top, that will pick up some of the ink from the bottle into the pipette and then just squeeze again. And can you see that's starting to move already? Because we added a little bit of water to start with, that's starting to move already. But let's bring in another of the colours and now we're going for the blackberry. All I can think of now is a crumble, a blackberry and apple yeah. crumble. Yeah, oh nice. It's this the weather for it. Yeah, it is roast dinner and a crumble. Would it be double cream, custard, hot or cold or ice cream though? Oh, can I have all three? <laughs> you can have all three, absolutely you can. With no, it would be hot crumble uh, ice cream for me. Ooh. Hot and cold together I think is delish, yeah. See, or if it was going to be custard, it would be cold custard, hot crumble. Oh, cold custard, oh I don't, I'm not a fan of cold custard. Not going hot, hot Johnny, no, we have to go hot, cold. So you ever have, I think you have hot, you have a hot condiment on a cold dessert, or you have a hot dessert with a cold condiment. Mm. Charlotte agrees and she's from Morpeth so she would know. <laughs> so then we've just gone back in with a little bit of the hibiscus and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our spritz bottle and Ooh. we're going to just start to activate, oh, look how they run, we're going to start to activate those inks. So and then we're going to just allow it to run together so just Allow that to run. Allow those colours all to merge into each other. If you want to get moving again, and my bottle's running out of water, so I'm just going to grab another one. Oh yeah, look at that. Allow those colours all run into each other like so. We chose three colours. You could do this with more. You could do it with a couple of colours. Depending how many you've got in your stash, it's completely up to you. You can get a range of different effects. Then if we just blot that off a little bit, this is going to mute it down a little bit. If you want that to be really, really intense. This is like proper messy crafting now, isn't it? This is proper mixed media, isn't it, really? But by just blotting that, that's going to give us a different effect entirely. It's just going to dull that down a little bit. It looks a little bit like the shaving foam technique, doesn't it? It it's does, got a similar kind it? of vibe, yeah. Yeah, you can, of course, use these um, botanical stains in your shaving foam Amazing. technique. Amazing. Which would be absolutely fabulous. So we're going to leave that to dry. And we're going to go, should we go for another little technique? Let's bring in, let's bring in one of these um, tags. Great price on these as well, four pounds each for $5.99, which is fantastic. It's crazy because they're 60 mil. These are proper big bottles. They're big, aren't they, yeah. Yeah. That price, yeah, it probably is my doing. <laughs> I've probably made a <laughs> terrible mistake. Johnny in my ears saying, who has done this price? Yeah, it could have been me. <laughs> oh, well, grab it while it's there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so now we're working onto our craft mat. This is one of our Spectrum Noir craft mats. Should be on the website. And I'm using exactly the same range of colours. And I'm adding a few drops of each onto my craft mat. I didn't realise until recently when Janet explained as well, you get a slightly different sort of technique doing it on this mat than you do on the glass mat. Yeah, which absolutely. Which sounds, sounds illogical, doesn't it? But yeah. it really does. Yeah, it does give you a totally different effect. So de definitely have a little experiment um, and just say which one you prefer, really. Just different, different surfaces, different effects. So fine spray mister. Adding a little bit of water onto here. Getting our tag, and all we're going to do, this might seem a little bit scary at first, but just face side down, just imagine we're mopping up, then have a look. And then we're going to go back in on the other side. And this is perfect if you've got waste um, ink on your mat, just for mopping up the excess. And can That's you see amazing. How easy was that? 
but we've still got loads left on our mat. We're not having that. We're not wasting anything. Mm. Thank you very much, given how yummy these products are. So we're bringing in a slightly smaller tag and we're going to mop that up in exactly the same way, just like so. So just mopping up that excess ink. And because this is almost like our second generation, if you like, it's our second, second dib in, we're going to get a slightly more muted effect. Then if we go down to a slightly smaller tag, and if you want to extend this even more, you could add another spritz of water just to water that down a little bit more. And then you could keep going and keep going with a slightly more diluted effect. So I'm literally just mopping up the mat, I'm literally cleaning up the mat, but getting a fantastic effect into the bargain. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to um, dilute that bit in the middle. And then just keep on swooshing. And then finally, we'll go to our really diddy little tag. And let's see if we've got anything left up on the mat. Just mop up I those. mean, that is zero <laughs> waste there, isn't it? Completely. It's literally ready to go away now, isn't oh, it? Oh, there you go. Tiny little bit left onto that. And then a little bit of water. So literally, we've got how many tags? Four tags. That's amazing. Four From what, a few drops of ink? Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I think it was about five drops of ink. So we've got one. We've got two, we've got three, and we've got four. <laughs> All from a few dabs of ink, which is absolutely brilliant. So much value for money. If you think you're getting 60 mils and we've got all that from a few drops, crazy how long these are going to last absolutely brilliant look. loads of love coming in for this Lily says i am loving all the beautiful links and stains i am learning so much from lily so thank you for that uh, patty says i bought the botanical collection when it first launched haven't used it yet but i love all the pieces in it uh, i'm saving the show to go back and watch it jan did the original launch and now we have lily she's like a jan junior jan junior love oh, that what I love a great that. name uh, they definitely they definitely need to keep lily on the ctv show schedule she's a natural isn't oh, she just thank you so patty? much I'd be quite happy to be a Jan Junior. I've been watching Jan for years. I yeah. love Jan stuff. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully I'm doing our Jan proud. <laughs> <laughs> now, while those bits are drying, I'm going to show you one of the dyes from the collection. So I've shown you the tags, which of course I absolutely love. But I have to say I am truly obsessed with this dye. This is our rustic honeycomb and this comes in our collection and it's absolutely fabulous. It reminds me a little bit of chicken wire so you could take it down a more That's industrial a bit, look. Yeah, can you imagine cutting that in your silver mirror cards? Yeah. How fab would that look? It would. You were saying earlier as well, there's one dye, isn't there, that's not in this collection as well. So we only yeah. have so few of it. Um, it is very, very limited. I don't even think I have a sample of it. Uh, it is so limited. It's so uh, limited, even we can't get one. Absolutely, <laughs> even we can't get our hands on it. I'll show you a picture of it. It's the uh, Shabby Basics Cheesecloth Craft Dye, uh, which is awesome. You could make it look like lots of different materials, I think, depending on uh, how you cut it as well. But definitely add that uh, into your basket as well. Twelve ninety nine or eighteen ninety nine is the price of that one on its own. Absolutely. Oh, here comes a picture of it. There you are. That is the dye. Next slide, please. Thank you. How absolutely fabulous is that? And I must say, I've got it here. I've cut it in craft card. The, oh, only six. Six <gasps> of them left, yeah. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Look, it looks like Hessian. It does, doesn't it? it does. Shall I quickly add a little bit of ink to this? Come on then, quick. Yeah, go on. Well, we've got six left. Quick, quick, quick. Come on, Lily, speed crafting. <laughs> Where's my blending tool? Because, <laughs> do you know what? This is more for my own benefit than anything else. But I want to show you at home how fabulous this looks. So it looks great in your craft card. But if you add a little bit of ink, it really does look like real Hessian. So I'm adding a little bit of the Seal Brown Water Reactive from Spectra Noir. And it's just going to give it an even more realistic effect. So it literally looks like we have cut it out of Hessian. But we call it cheesecloth, so if you cut it in white, it'll give you a completely different effect. What about adding some of your pearl tints and all that mm. sort of thing to make it pearly and shiny? Oh, I bet some of our uh, gilding wax is <gasps> lovely on there as well. Oh, can you imagine cutting it in black and adding mm. a little bit of gold gilding wax? It's beautiful. Oh. But, yeah, grab really that nice. while you can. Six left. Yeah, five left now. Five so left. Be quick. <laughs> <gasps> Gotta be quick. Right. No more looking at that. Back to what we were supposed to be doing before I got distracted by pretty things. <laughs> so many pretty things on the show. So we've run this through the die cutting machine and you can see one pass through, it cuts absolutely perfectly. So just removing that and your die brush is going to be your best friend with this. So literally creating a load of confetti. Here I am. <laughs> creating a load of confetti. Just getting those pieces out. It's all cut absolutely beautifully. 
as you'd expect, if you've ever used Creative Expressions dies before, you'll know the quality of them. Um, you'll know that they cut beautifully every single time, even with something that's really, really delicate and intricate filigree like this die. So we're just poking, so we've got our pokey release holes and just take your time just to remove this because like I say, it is quite um, delicate and intricate. I was going to say you don't want to rip it, but do you know what? With this style of crafting, I really wouldn't worry um, if you if you do at all. If you saw Playcrafts right this morning, I was actually chopping into this. Um, I was using parts of it. You don't have to use the whole die. It is a really, really nice size die. So if you are working on your larger projects, perhaps on your scrapbook pages, even on your home decor, this is going to fill the space really, really well. But nice addition need... uh, as well, something like our Be Beautiful collection. <gasps> if you've got that, this would go really lovely with that, wouldn't it? Absolutely fabulous. I must say, I might have a little bit of that at home. So you've given me an idea. <laughs> when I get back tonight, I could very well be be um, so that'll be it. That. You'll be crafting when you get home tonight. Do you, oh, how gosh, much crafting yeah. do you do? What, what is like your sort of go-to? What got you started? <gasps> well, everything and anything. I think when I was really young, I loved all the um, drawing and colouring. So for yeah. me, stamping and colouring is sort of like my first love. Right. But any sort of crafting, I love die cutting, love stamping. Um, card folding, box making, all sorts. Honestly, I'm just a craft. I'll, I'll try anything <laughs> crafting. <laughs> so you can see when that's come out of our die, how gorgeous that's cut. Think snipping into that thing, adding your own sprays, using that as a mask, as a stencil itself. How fab would that look? But just really, really easy to cut out and add some extra detail onto your projects. Now, are we wanting to carry on with this or do we want it as a two-parter to be continued? Ooh, so I we reckon we should, I, we're all right to carry on if Let's you carry on, yeah. Right, let's build up some more detail in this background. So this is just about dry. You can be popping your um, heat tool. That words were escaping me for a second then. Hmm. Heat tool is what I'm thinking of. You can be using your heat tool onto that if you like and you can actually be building uh, you can actually be drying this off. I'm just going to fetch a quick ink pad. So I'm going to go for a couple of purple ink pads and we're going to start to build up a little bit more detail. So we're going to come back with our stamping hand technique and I'm going to go for plum pudding. I'm using again some of the stamps within the collection and I have to say I'm absolutely obsessed if you hadn't noticed already with script stamp. This is only our third demo and this is the second use of a script mm. stamp. They're just brilliant for backgrounds. I'm not even particularly worried if this is upside down or the right way around because I'm just using it as, as a background, just as a, a little, little bit of something, just to add a little bit of extra detail. And then I'm going to go in, I'm going to go for my crushed velvet ink next. I'm going to use exactly the same technique with this hessian. You can see this has already been used quite Quite if well. we did want to mount these up or put them on, can we just attach them simply to a, a platform or use them in the way we do sort of a regular acrylic stamp? Yeah, absolutely. They're just your regular clear stamps. So use them with your acrylic blocks, use them with your stamp platforms. They'll just cling to your, um, your blocks really, really easily. You don't need to put any sort of repositionable adhesive on the back. Okay. They'll cling. If you find one day you come to them and they're falling off or whatever, chances are they're just a little bit mucky or you've got a little bit of um, embossing powder perhaps on the back just make sure you're giving a nice little wash leave them to um, air dry naturally uh, and then they should be good to go once again but yeah i'm going to add a few of the butterflies onto there just for that little bit of detail we're not worrying that we're missing a bit in the middle if we wanted a perfect impression then be using your blocks and all that sort of thing but in this instance we don't we're even going for our second generation onto there just to build up those layers in the background even third and fourth generation why not just to give us that subtle bit of detail onto there building up our backgrounds really really easily like so then you could be spritzing with water perhaps just to make that bleed out a little bit more actually why not let's do it we are very much crafting on the hoof here this is what mixed media is absolutely all about just having a play so to make those blend into the background a little bit more my um water mist is on the blink i think it needs a bit more watering Oh well. I can get you some there more. There we water. go. Alright, it's alright, thank you. It's <laughs> it's coming, I think. I think it's um I'll get I'll get a refill, but Brilliant. thank you. Thank you. Then if we just give it a little blot just to dry it, you can leave it to dry naturally, but to make it um bleed out even more, 
just dry it with a rather quite messy, <laughs> quite mucky now piece of, of kitchen towel. We don't need to bin it. It's not going in the bin until it's an absolute rag. And um, that's, you know, waste not, want not. You know what those crafters are like. But then that just sort of dilutes that a little bit more, makes them part of the background even more, just like so. So that's going to be our background for the card. Hmm. Let's think about building this up. Oh, go. a magical fairy, thank you, has done this for me. The water, water spritzer fairy has been. <laughs> can bring in our tags onto here. We can start thinking about layering this up. I'm thinking it's maybe a little bit too pinky. So we're going to bring in some inks. Let's bring in seal brown, shall we? This might seem a little bit strange, but we just want to knock back this colour a little bit. Knock it back. So let's get some brown ink. This is just going to make it a little bit more vintage. Just going to edge it and it's going to make it stand out a little bit more from the background. And can you see my desk is getting messier and messier. The area that I'm working in is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> the next thing you know, I'll be working in a one inch square, but that's sort of all I know as a crafter. You could, I could honestly, I could have three, four tables and I'd end up filling them what's all. Your, what's your craft space like at home? Well, I have to say I'm very, very lucky. I've actually got two craft rooms. What, two craft yeah. rooms? So one of them's more for storage because basically the amount of stuff I've got is quite frankly ludicrous. Right. <laughs> um, and the other one is more, well, there is storage in there because it needs to be, but it's more where I work. So that's where my desk is. Right. I have a nice desk in front of the window, which is quite nice. You get a nice bit of natural light. Nice. Mind you, you're usually watching the rain come down thinking, oh, I'm glad to be inside crafting. Yeah, but at yeah. the moment, definitely. I don't <gasps> yeah. know if you can hear it at home. I mean, it is absolutely chucking it. It's, it's eased off a bit now, but it's been raining all day. We've had about, about eight days now, I think, of continuous rain. It's horrendous. It is yeah. awful. We've got about another four or five days worth to go, apparently. Brilliant. I feel oh, no. like, because um, as well as crafting, I love running. I feel like every time I go out for a run now, I've got all my uh, wet weather gear on. I need yeah. a canoe, I think, sometimes. <laughs> 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 what we're doing is we're just inking the edges, using our seal brown, so just knocking back this colour a little bit more and stopping it from being too sort of bright and intense and just knocking the colour back. So do you remember these four tags earlier? There are mopping up tags that we created. So we laid down some of the colour and now we're just edging them. And this allows us to actually bring out the detail with that lovely shabby edge that we've got to these tags. They are just fabulous. Now, we've got a sentiment. Um, it's the Reese Botanical. It's almost like a dictionary definition. And I've stamped that onto white card using a black um, waterproof ink pad. Just gives me the option if I do want to add some water-based mediums onto there. If I change my mind and decide to start spritzing or whatever onto it, then it's not going to bleed. And I've ripped the edges. That's a technique that we had a little look at um, during today's Play Your Crafts, right? So just ripping the edges like we showed earlier and then adding some ink is just going to allow that to all tie together. And then I'm going to bring in, I've got a card base, it's just an A5 card base in white card. And to make sure that this isn't too stark, we're going to ink this up again. So keeping this continuity across the whole project with our inking. Same colour again, it's our seal brown. And of course I'm using my Spectrum Noir round blending tool just to build up this colour. You can be using your finger daubers if you find those easier, or even the square blending tool, or we've got our... Um, mini blending sponges. If you find that easier, then absolutely by all means use those instead. But I just, I quite like using the blending tools. I find them quite easy to use. And then I think we're going to edge this piece as well, just to keep everything tied in together. Now it is slightly damp. I would probably dry this if I was at home and had more time, but there's just so many things I want to show you. We've got so much on the show just for a little bit of speed, not drying it, but it's not going to be a problem. I just love the colour combos there, <gasps> the way they all sort of run into each other, creating all those new colours. It's very, very exciting. It's fab, isn't it? So you could say, have, you might think you've got three colours because you've bought three bottles, but actually you've got so many more because you can start to mix them, see how they all play with each other. It's so, so much fun. So really, it's almost like endless colours. You get yourself a few bottles and just get playing and see how many colours you can come up with and what you can create absolutely brilliant so that's that we're going to start laying the card out so i always say always make sure you lay your card out before you start sticking anything down so we're going to have that onto there as our background then we're going to bring in our tags and i might not stick this down as it is still a little bit wet but we can definitely lay it out and have a little look what we're thinking and then we can maybe build these up like so thinking maybe having that onto there and then Perhaps our sentiment 
to the side. Then a little bit of added detail. I think we're going to bring in our rustic honeycomb. So just to tie this in, because it would look a little bit too stark, being the only bit of pure white cardstock on the card, we're going to add some more of this ink. And I'm not worried about this being, if I rip it, I'm not worried if I tear it. In fact, I might want to do that just to give it a more rustic and authentic look and just to make everything tie together really, really nicely. I could, of course, be spritzing onto this. I could be using my stains onto it. I could even be using this as a mask even be taking this background and sort of getting a two for one so while I'm inking up the actual um, die cut itself I'm using it as a mask so I'm getting two that's uses awesome. yeah that's quite nice that because I'm not getting any ink that way onto my glass mat that I'm just going to wipe up and waste I'm getting my two for one so I'm and inking. even more texture I think what mm. you're teaching us to do is to go for this master class it's all about building up all those individual layers isn't it creating all that texture which gives you that real sort of mixed media look and feel absolutely mixed media is really just as I say it's about playing but it's also about layers and I always say don't stop until you're happy if you're not happy with how it looks just keep going until you get to a point where you look at it and think yeah I'm happy with that that's finished that's when you know you're done. Because a, a question we get quite often is, when do you know when to stop? And the easiest answer is when you're happy. Right. When you feel there's enough on there, when you feel like it looks finished, but there's not too much on there, that's when you stop. And if you're not happy, then don't stop. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep going, going. Keep reworking it. Like I say, there's always, there's usually a fix. I don't want to say always, but there's usually a fix if you're not happy with something. Just Most keep of the viewers are saying they're too mesmerised by this demonstration to talk. <gasps> in the comments that's what i'm saying oh yeah, bless you so quiet oh that's lovely mm. i'm glad you're enjoying it i'm really glad you're enjoying it and i can't wait to see what you guys are going to create when you get these home yeah and absolutely you'll be able to watch this back anytime you like and yeah we create lily's demonstrations of course and yeah and make sure you send uh, us and lily pictures when you do that <gasps> oh well. yeah please on my social i'd love to Instagram? say i am uh, at lily fletcher craft there you um, are. Lily Fletcher Craft on Facebook and Instagram. Please send me your pictures of all your crafty stuff. I, not just because I'm nosy, but I absolutely mm -hmm. love to see them and we all inspire each other, don't we? So yeah, definitely share, share and share alike. Absolutely. Brilliant. So if I took that under there, I could be adding a bit of this. I don't know if we've still got any left or oh, cheesecloth. I can be naughty and just... It's in satin baskets at the moment, I believe. You need to check <gasps> get it, it out. Get it checked out. out! Yeah, get it checked get out. Get it checked out. We can lay that up. I'm not going to glue it together because it is still a little bit wet, but leave it to dry and then just glue it all together. Maybe some foam pads onto there just to build up the dimension, but really, really easy to create something like that. Just having a play. All it is, just having a play. Really, really, really easy, beautiful. but so much fun. And what would you use adhesive-wise to stick all those together at, uh, once it's dried, Lily? So my first layer, my flat layer, I'd be using my all-purpose glue. Then I'd be using my tacky glue in a fine-tip glue applicator for these detailed um, die-cut elements. And I think my tags I'd be doing with foam tape or foam and a roll just for a little bit of lift. And then the sentiment foam tape again, just Brilliant. to lift it off. But it's totally up to you. If you want to keep it flat, if it's perhaps going in a journal, then just go for your old purpose or your tacky glue. Completely Excellent. up to you. Let me share with you again then what you're getting in there. Really lovely collection here at Stamps and Dyes, all put together to really enable you to build up all that texture and all of those layers, which is fantastic. Uh, so you're getting your wildflowers in here. You're also going to get the French script, uh, the nature the uh, nature finds as well uh, in here. Uh, we've also then got in here dates from the past. You've got that butterfly walk in there and then your two dies, uh, which are really, really great size. Uh, you've got a rustic honeycomb and those tattered tags. I think the tags and the honeycomb actually are gonna come in so, so versatile for a whole host of different um, for a whole host of different projects. Um, oh, Sarah Casey, sorry being so quiet. I've been tidying my craft desk. I've got my new OG Gemini in its permanent place on my desk. It has been delivered. She, she took your word, Lily. She didn't wait. It's out on the, on the craft space already. Oh, really? Oh, I have complaints. Sorry, you, you're going to love it. Fabulous yeah, absolutely machine. you will. Uh, Charlotte says, great demos, Lily. So glad uh, you are uh, here to show us these. Nee saying, masterclass with Lily. What a treat. Glad I tuned in. Well, in between chores. Hello, gorgeous Joe And genteel, Lily. Love that. Uh, from from a cloudy New Jersey. And she's oh. put a weather report in there for us, which is Thank nice. Thank you. Appreciate we love that. <laughs> 
<laughs> we love a weather report. Kathy says, I love Lily, she crafts like we do. Absolutely, she does. What, um, getting myself in a terrible mess? <laughs> what it's uh, all about. What it's all about. It's all about getting messy, none more so than we're talking about mixed media. Oh, yeah. Uh, Coletta says, lovely make, Lily. Lots of inspiration, so thank you for that. We, I want to share with you some other bits that are on the show that are proving quite busy at the moment that you're loving. The Liquid Ink collection here, remember? Uh, you've got eight in this particular collection. Uh, a really gorgeous selection of colours in here. So you're going to get antique bronze, pewter, burnished copper, ancient bronze, aged copper, tarnished silver, vintage satin and the antique pearl. Essentially you're getting two for free when you get them in that particular configuration. But we've also got the re-inkers available for you on the show as well. And in here you'll get the cherry red, uh, which is the DR3, nectarine, which is OR2, sunshine, which is CT2, camo green, which is the DG3, true blue, TB4, uh, Damson, PL5 and also Frost Pink, which is the MG1. Uh, they are all coming in there for you, which is excellent. Something else which are brilliant for mixed media and also for going on a whole host of different surfaces is our acrylic paint marker uh, collection. You've got 16 markers in here in total which is fantastic so uh, definitely snap those up so busy when we launch those and they continue to be now you've got the brights the jewels the pastels and the essentials in there which is awesome uh, we also have some midas metallic ink pads for you uh, on the show as well uh, you've got four there in that particular. Oh, you've got blue organza, amethyst, rose satin, and also the pink lace in there for you. So 15.96 or 25.44 if you want to get your hands on those. We're going to have a look next, though, at the awesome pop-outs that we've got here. I, I love these. I love how modern the designs are in these particular pop-outs. And they are also big dies, these ones, as well, which are going to create big projects for you. So you've got this one just here. This one is, uh, that one's called, I believe it's just called Woof, this one, isn't it? It is indeed. Woof there with your little doggy. Uh, this one is Perfect Pals there. So I love that you've got the sentiment built into the background of that also. This one here is Hooray. Uh, brilliant for any kind of celebration, that one. Then you've got this one here, which is your surprise. And you've got On the Road as well. Uh, which is fabulous. Again, really lovely um, modern designs in each of these. Brilliant price for you as well. 50-40 or 74-40 if you are a Platinum member. Remember, every single person that places an order over £10 or $20 today will receive a copy of Crafter's Inspiration Issue 1 as well. Uh, that is coming to you absolutely free of charge. I believe that's worth 9 99 or 12 95 So uh, you will receive that free of charge, which is amazing. I need to go back as well and re just recap those background stencils. Still proving very, very busy on these at the moment. Uh, and in here, you're going to get the Elegant Trellis. You've also got the Love Hearts. Then you have got the Scattered Foliage. This one here is your Cute Florals. You've got your Abstract Swirls. That's the Rosebud Floral. And also the Beautiful Butterflies and the Polka Dots as well. So grab those. 34.90 or 46.90 if you want to get your hands on those ones. Right, uh, we need to go and have another look as well at Fuzzy Friends, which are these ones here. Uh, you saw Lily do a beautiful demonstration on these a little earlier. Go back and watch that if you missed it. We've got four different characters within here. This one is Horace. Uh, we also have this one here, which is Hugo. You've got Ba Lamb in there as well. And uh, this one here, which is the Daisy, which is the one uh, that you saw Lily demonstrating with a moment ago. £22 or $32 if you want to get your hands on those. Right, I need to share with you as well. We've spoken about it a lot. It's a complete essential this week. It's this week's Get It, Got It Good. You're going to get watercolour cardstock in there, a pack of the Nina cardstock, craft cardstock, matte black cardstock, and the white stamping card. Uh, they are literally the five uh, core cardstocks that we carry here at Crafters Companion. And then our two uh, hero glues as well. You've got your all purpose glue and your tacky glue a great great stash builder uh, there or brilliant if you just want to maybe replenish uh, your collection which is fantastic we are going to go uh, back to those uh, amazing pop outs uh, and i believe uh, lily's got some inspiration for us absolutely now this is a fantastic collection of dies it's something a little bit different for your collection and there's such a range of designs within the set so you've got something for sort of every occasion you've got the lovely woof doggy die you've got something for your celebrations with your present and the die i'm going to use for this particular little demo is the surprise and i just basically want to show you how easy it is to work with these now they pop out dies so they focus on the center of our card they're making the center of our card as special as the outside is so the surprise die i've taken this particular die and if we have a little look at it it does look perhaps a little bit peculiar 
So we've got the design and then we've got these sort of strips, but these are going to fold back to create our pop out element. Now, the way I find easiest to work with these is to start with a larger piece of cardstock and then just actually cut it down after we've die cut. Now, all I'm doing is I'm going to be taking my large Gemini plate. So earlier I was using my big Gemini, oh, get my teeth in, my big Gemini machine, but with my junior plates. Now, these particular dies do fit on your junior plates. Oh, fantastic. However, if you wanted to do a slightly bigger card, you will need the larger plate just to accommodate your size of card. But okay. the dies themselves do fit on your junior plates. But I will be using the big plates, the big daddy plates, just because I want to be creating a larger card size. So I'm starting, it is a piece of A4, but I've just chopped the top off. Basically, it needs to be bigger than six by nine, but we'll come to the cutting down bit a little bit later. I'm going to turn our die over and we're just going to position it into place. So we're going to take some low tack tape. This is really important that you actually tape your die down because you don't want it moving because we do need it to stay in the middle. And all we're going to do is we're going to position our die in the very middle of the cardstock. Now we'll be trimming the edges and the top and the bottom a little bit later, but we do want to position it in the middle. Now you want to be careful because you kind of want to tape on the waist, but because the whole car stock is not really cutting a lot away, we are going to have to tape a little bit on the bit that we're not cutting away. So make sure it is low tack tape. Then just flip your die over. So we don't want to cut into our magnetic mat. Been there, done that a few times. <laughs> mm. And we don't want to be doing that today. And run that through our die cutting machine. Now you can be using these with any car stock you like. I'd recommend something over 250 because this is sort of our construction element, our sort of card shape itself. We need it to have that strength and rigidity to it. So that it's going to be able to hold those score lines well. If it is too thin, if we're using paper, then what you'll probably find is not going to hold its shape well enough. Now that it's upside down, so I'm just going to turn it round for you so you can see nicely. So you can see that's cut absolutely beautifully. It's in the very centre of the plate, so we might expect that the pressure is not going to be as great. On a lot of machines, we say, oh, don't cut in the centre of the plate. The pressure's not good enough on the Gemini. Absolutely not. Pressure all over this A4 plate. So if we turn it over and we just gently ease it out, we don't want to rip our cardstock where the low tack tape is. It was actually a fresh piece, so it might have a bit of tack to it, but that's okay. And just gently peel back the die cut. I always say it's like um, peeling back a plaster. I remember our Leanne on telly years and years ago saying that. It's like peeling back a plaster. You don't want to peel them um, too quickly. So you, there is danger that you'll actually rip it. Yeah. So you can say, it's cut absolutely beautifully, first time through the die cutting machine. You can see that's in the centre there. Then all I'd be doing is I'd be trimming it down. So it's up to you how wide you have it or how narrow. You can leave it like that if you like, or you can be cutting it down a little bit. The one that I'm going to bring in later, I have cut it down a little bit. I'm just going to show you how we can actually fold this. So it's really, really easy to do. Just take your time and you'll find it's quite easy. I'm going to start at the top. So I'm going to start with this score line here and I'm going to fold this back on itself just like so. And these sorts of pop out cards do just take a little bit of manipulation. So, and then the next one, we're going to go the, in the opposite direction. So a lot of the time, when we've gone one way, we're then going to go the other way. So we're working on this tab now, and we're going to fold back like we did for that top one. So the first two, we're folding like that, and that's actually a, what we call a valley fold. The next one by this tab, we're going to go in the opposite way. So that is our mountain fold. And it can be a little bit of manipulating to get it to go into position at first. But when you get a few more of those folds in place, it does just get a little bit easier. Then we're going to go to these score lines around the bottom here. So there's one around that present and we're just going to fold that into a valley fold. So it's going back like so. And can you see it's already starting to take shape? And then here, can you see we've got a score line, but it doesn't extend the whole way of our piece of cardstock. So all we're going to do is going to grab a scoreboard. So grabbing my scoreboard, and then we're just going to extend this line onto there, if we have a scoring tool, which unfortunately 
I can't find. Oh, uh, I found one. Well, Lee's God. asking about the colour of this dye being bronze. Does that make it a multimedia dye? I think no. that's just our dyes that follow that rule of thumb, isn't it? Lee? Yeah. So um, creative expressions, their t dyes tend to be the bronze ones. So these are just normal paper craft dyes. Um, it's just sort of ours that we do the bronze for the for the mixed media. So yeah, just normal. Um, that cheesecloth dye has <gasps> gone. Congratulations, gone. You got your hands on that. We knew it was going to go, didn't we? So it yeah. has. Uh, the last of those have checked out. It's in your basket. You need to remove it now. I'm afraid. Yeah. So we've just extended that score line, and all that's going to do is it allows us to do a wider card if we want. And then we're going to do a valley fold onto that. And can you see it's already starting to take shape? This pop-up element is starting to pop up, if you like. It's really quite simple and how easily it's, it comes together. It's amazing, isn't it? It's those first couple of score lines, you, you're a bit all fingers and thumbs. You're sort of thinking, not quite sure how this is going to go together. But once you've got it, it's easy. And what I'd recommend, actually, with all of these, once you've made them up once, maybe take a little picture on your phone and save it. So then next time you come to make it, you know exactly where the score line's going. It's just going to save you a little bit of time. Just a little Fabulous. tip for that one. Because I've got one already done here, so I can look at that. But if I was at home, I'd have a little picture on my phone. So I might not necessarily have another card and I could just refer to that. I just find it so much easier to have one that I can follow. So that is the basic mechanism. So it's really, really easy to fold that up like so. Now, I, one I've done earlier, I've used oh, Centura Pearl. Another thing nice. I'm obsessed with. It's shiny, it's pearly, it's pretty. <laughs> You've got to love it. And I've trimmed this down a little bit. So this is measuring five and three quarter inches by nine inches. So it's going to give us this card shape so that when it, it folds, it sort of matches up. So this edge is going to be flush with this edge. But it looks a little bit, I don't know, a little bit sort of naked. We need a backer to it because this is just <laughs> the inside of our card. It's a naked card. So we've taken another piece of cardstock, and again, beautiful pearly cardstock, I've chosen this blue colour, and I've cut it to exactly the same size and just scored it in half. So it is five and three quarters by nine, so then that means it's scored at 4.5. Yeah, quick maths there. <laughs> and then all we're going to do is we're going to glue this into the inside, and it's just going to give us that back in that blue shining through, and it's going to make that design really pop through. So we do just need to think about where we are popping our glue onto here. We don't want to add too much glue and we end up sticking our pop-up element down. So it would be a little bit of a shame. You don't want your pop-up to be a stuck down. <laughs> stuck down. Mm, mm. It doesn't have the same ring to it, no. does it? A stuck down card. <laughs> no, it no. doesn't. Uh, Robbie says, I love watching uh, you. Lily, you do a great job. So easy to understand and follow. Oh, thank you. Uh, Donna says, I ordered my Gemini. Can't wait to get <gasps> it. You're going to love it. Oh, yeah, you, you are. You really are. It just uh, makes your life so much easier. It, thing is, it just works. <laughs> and I know it sounds mm. ridiculous, it just works. It I cuts. think we take it for granted sometimes as well, don't we? Because you're so used to using a machine that cuts first time every time. <laughs> yeah, and it's only when you have to, you're forced to use another machine, you think, oh my gosh, other mm. machines don't actually cut half the mm. time. <laughs> yeah, because you saw how easily that ran through. And it was the same with the um, honeycomb dye earlier. It literally just went straight through, no messing about, no shimming it up, turning it round left, right and centre, worrying, shall I put it at this part of the plate, is it, is it not going to cut, not having to crank anything through, no aching arms, just easy, all easy sorted. crafting, that's what it's all about, it means we can spend more time playing on the stuff we like, getting messy, yeah, not time die cutting and shimming stuff up, so we've applied glue to that bottom section, and then we've applied glue around this edge, none under here, because we need this to fly free, and a little bit round there. And I've used my all-purpose glue, and it's given me that little bit of wiggle room. You probably saw that I wasn't quite happy with it to start with, so I've just been manipulating it around so that we get it nice and perfect in the middle. And that's the inside of our card. So it goes like that, and then it pops up. And it's the same with all of the designs in the collection. They're really, really easy to pop together. But I think we need something on the outside of our card. Absolutely. And one of our lovely viewers asked earlier about our pearl tints. Yes, they did indeed. Right, shall we have a little play with our pearl tints? Let's do it. So let's go for this one. I believe this is blue diamond. Oh, it is. Get me, eh? It's a word I can say, blue diamond. Um, and was Mary, Mary Beth that was asking about the pearl tints. There we Mary go. Beth, we are catering to your needs, hopefully. This is just one technique. There's so much you can do with these. You can pop in your shaving foam techniques. You can use them almost as 3D pearls. You can paint with them. You can do so much. Stained glass window techniques are fantastic with these. 
I know we've got some of those dies coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Stained glass window dies. Right, you could use these, are those brilliant? Oh yeah, you can use them on acetate, absolutely fantastic. But let's go for something really, really quite modern. Now, when you're using something like this, I'd always get a piece of scrap card and just test it out first of all. This could be on your craft mat because you can wipe that clean, but just see, you might have a blocked nozzle like I do. And the best way to find out is by doing it on some scrap card. And this one does definitely have a blocked nozzle. So all I'd be doing in order to unblock that nozzle is I would just be sticking a stainless steel pin into the top of there just to unblock that nozzle. So going with a new one, and I'm already covered, of course. And you can just check the flow. And you can just sort of get a feel, because all different products like this, they um, dispense at a different rate, they work a little bit differently. So just give that text test every time you use it. You can see you can actually do your pearl drops with this very, very easily. And you've got that lovely pearly sheen onto there. But nice. Should we go really modern? Let's go for something a little bit different, a little different use for this. Right, so we're going to actually create our own really modern background. So I'm going to start off, and I'm just squeezing, moving. I'm not touching the cardstock. I'm hovering just above, like so. If you break off like I just did, just carry on, rejoin. And we're just going to create a sort of swirly pattern, just like so. This is going to give us a really, really different effect Quite easy to create, quite fun, something a little bit different. You might not have thought to do something like this before, but just drawing like, so you don't need to be artistic, you don't need to be good at drawing. You could be doing this with any of the colours, and of course you could be doing it with more than one colour. You could be using several colours, maybe you're picking up a few different colours of these today. You can be doing this with all of them for a really, really fun effect. This is great perhaps for teenage cards, for kids cards. Could go really, really bright and tropical really nice for kids parties but just drawing take your time I when I first started doing this I was going a little bit quick and you find that it doesn't give you a good as result as if you just take your time and if you need to go back in and fill little bits in just like that oh then, that's awesome you can just go and add bits back in yeah absolutely it's so so easy to do it's really really forgiving so if you do break off if you need to give your hand a rest for a second and you need to stop then absolutely you can do it you can just go back in and just refill that area in so add in another one and you can go back in and rejoin bits like that that you went and did previous you can even add little bits of dotting detail onto there just following the design perhaps to fill out spaces and i like to work in odd numbers you know what it's like so it's got to be three could be five but not definitely not two <laughs> and if you carry on like that leave it to dry i left mine overnight it was quite cold last night, but it did oh, dry awesome. overnight. That's the sort of effect you can create. So easy. You might not have thought of doing something like that. It's really quite modern, quite fun, um, but really quite quick to create. Now, if we bring back in our card, this can be the front of our card. So we're going to take some of our, um, of course, call out all purpose in the Get It Deal, along with your other card stocks and adhesives. And I've done this onto stamping card because it's not a particularly wet uh, techniques not really really wet adhesive we don't I say adhesive um, the pearl tint sorry and um, it's not really really watery so you're not going to need something like watercolor card for a technique like this so your stamping card will be absolutely fantastic and then I'm going to finish off um, with a sentiment so this is actually from the fuzzy friends collection so you can see how you can mix and match everything we've got on the show today um, everything works together really really nicely so bringing in all the bits that you've got in your crafty stash bringing in our sentiment we're matting and layering it onto a little bit of that same lovely blue pearly cardstock a bit of foam on the roll foam on a roll on the back <laughs> and then we're going to add this on as our finishing touch birthday greetings but of course it could be any celebration at all could even be christmas with a little change of the colors and then you're thinking, you receive this through the post, you think, mm, it's a really quite nice design we've got there. And then we open it up and it becomes even more special. Fabulous. Pops up. You could be paper piecing that, you could be colouring that in yourself, making it really, really special. But just with two colours of card, it looks fabulous. It really, really does. Let me take you back through the designs you're going to get then in these pop-outs here. So you've got Woof, which is this one uh, just here. Uh, you've also got Perfect Pals as well, which is that one there. Uh, then you've got the hooray you will also get surprise 
and also the on the road. They're all coming in there for you. All very different designs, great for different occasions as well. I love the sort of modern feel to all of the artwork that's been used in there at the moment. Very, very busy uh, across on the website at the moment. Um, and Robbie's saying these are the pr uh, prettiest dyes, modern and whimsical, which I love uh, together. Uh, Mary uh, says thanks to Lily for demonstrating those, um, those last products there. Uh, and Anne says I work in odd numbers too. Visually, I just like it better. Yeah, I think it just seems to work, doesn't it? Um, it's exceptionally busy over on the website. I'm gonna give you another opportunity to check out. Uh, whilst you do that, here's all the details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing, I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up, I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV, create every day. Very, very busy show uh, we are having at the moment, um, especially on those pop-outs. You guys are absolutely loving those uh, at the minute. Will those pearl, um, pearl products we just looked at, will they go on to acetate, ask Cara? Yeah. They will? Yeah, they are fabulous. Fantastic. Yeah, I think your stained glass window effects, mm, brilliant. Brilliant on that. Uh, and also Marianne wants to know, uh, any tips on avoided cracking when you're scoring Centura Pearl, Lily? Oh, I can't say I have a too much of a problem, but try not to score too hard. 
um, uh, too firmly and when you are going to fold it make sure you burnish using your scoring tool itself or a bone folder rather than just your fingers but yeah it should be all right excellent uh, right, we're going to move on to uh, the floral corners and edges. A really, really big collection, this one. Brilliant value in here for you. Let me take you through what you're getting. So you've got the rose corner. Love this, sort of like a, an edgeable tie, but for your corner, which makes total sense. Uh, really great for building frames. Love that you're also getting embellishments within here as well. So you're getting two smaller embellishing dies, which complement that beautifully. This one here is your forget-me-not corner. Uh, the next one I've got for you is your Daisy Bouquet Edger that you've got just there. Uh, really nice, very, very intricate uh, detailed design. You've got your Iris Edger as well, which is that one just there. Uh, a Crocus Edger. We also have the Climbing Clematis... Cle Clematis... Cl Clematis... Climbing Clematis Edger, which is that one just there. <laughs> All right, Charlotte, simmer down. Clem she's like Clematis, what are you on about? Uh, we've also got this one here, which is your Jasmine Edger. And then, of course, uh, your Wisteria Edger as well, um, which is that uh, £64.92, uh, which is fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant value uh, on these. Lovely that these are sort of all floral, Lily, because, I mean, the thing is about floral, they're never going to date, are they? You can have these in your stash for years and years and years and come back to these, it's still going to be relevant. Absolutely, I love florals. For me, florals have to be one of my go-tos. Flowers and butterflies, you can't go wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's a happy occasion, perhaps a more sad occasion, flowers are going to work perfectly. These are absolutely gorgeous dice and they sort of give us that paper cutting effect, almost laser cut or hand cut with a craft knife, but with dies. So if you're not amazing with a craft knife, I know there's no chance I could cut these and certainly not more than once, then these dies are gonna do it for you. But we're gonna start off with our background. So we're gonna bring in our watercolor inks once again. These are the fab ones with this amazing little delivery system that we had a little look at earlier. So pressing the button a couple of times. You just, love these, don't you? I can tell. I'm a little bit obsessed, you let's are. be honest. I know I could just sit here Pressing that button, getting me ink out all day long. And I'm working again onto my glass, not glass map, my craft map. You can be doing it onto your glass map. It's just going to give us a different effect, like we said earlier. And that one is our Radiant Orchid. A few dots of that onto our craft sheet. A little bit of a spritz of water, just to break up those um, spots of colour. We're going to take our watercolour card, and again, we're just going to do a little bit of mopping. So instead of smooching it around, we're just going to dot it in and that's going to give us a slightly different effect to what we got earlier. You can see how gorgeous. Radiant is definitely nice. the right, right word for this, isn't it? Certainly is radiant. It really is. And just keep dipping it until you've filled in as much colour as you want. If you want to dilute it a little bit more, you can actually be spritzing back onto your cardstock if you want. You can be mixing your colours, you can be using just the one colour like we are here. So there, are, there is so, so much you can be doing with these fabulous watercolour inks. And because they're pearlescent, once that dries, it's going to give us that lovely pearlescent luster. We're going to pop that to one side for now. That's just our background. Now I'm creating my background first, just gives us a little bit of time. So hopefully that can dry while we're going to start playing, I was going to say working with, nah, playing <laughs> with our lovely dies, our fantastic um, paper cuts dies that we were talking about earlier and that Joe's just taking you through. So we're going to start with the rose corner. I have to say roses I absolutely love. I think they are, I believe they're actually the nation's favourite flower here in Britain. Really? Yeah, I believe I've, so. I love the fact you get them in so many different colours and varieties, <gasps> yeah. which I find quite exciting. I think you think of your um, red roses and your pink roses, but you can get them yellow, blues, absolutely mm. all sorts. They're beautiful. I feel like I've banged on long enough now about the fact that lilies are my favourite flower. <gasps> Charlotte came to see me. Yeah. She bought me some lilies. Uh, and then another friend came around on Thursday evening, also bought a bunch of lilies. <gasps> and so I'll end up with two bunches this nice. week. Nice. Winning. Oh, I have to say, fresh flowers flowers there's no better smell is there it when really you come in the house it's yep. fabulous but this dye first thing I have to say I thought when I looked at this was oh, paper piecing I love a mm. bit of paper piecing how gorgeous would this be cutting it in several different colors perhaps actually actually I've just had I've just had a thought cut it once in white then what about doing your backgrounds like this and then cutting it again in your colour and using your pearlescent backgrounds as the pieces to paper piece back in. Nice, that'd be gorgeous. <gasps> How fab would that be? Anyway, the idea is just keep coming, don't they? So I've got a piece of cardstock, white cardstock, just stamping card. And if we look at these dies, we can see 
that this element is going to cut out but around this edge there's no outer cutting edge so this is going to stay in our card and this is what's going to give us the corner element but we don't have to use it just on the corners so if i take my piece of card start and i'm just going to lay that down and get it so it's kind of straight and even onto that taking our low tack tape always tape your dies down otherwise they will definitely move and a couple of pieces just to anchor each side and then we're going to run that through our die cutting machine now i'm using my junior plates this time just because the die is um, small enough to be able to do that but also my sheet of cardstock is small enough to be able to use those junior plates as well so running that through uh, beth says oh lily you are so neat with the ink i'm thinking i would have ink all over myself and everything <gasps> else at this point I'm doing, I'm doing all right. The hands are a little bit inky, let's be honest, but I'm not think, doing too bad. I think you're doing excellently. Uh, Karen yeah. says, I'm so glad that they told us about the difference in using the craft mat versus the glass mat for inking. It is really a true game changer. It is. Mm. It is. It's one of those things you don't even realise until you do it. And you're like, oh. Because you effects. just think they're both a non-porous surface, so yeah. how does it behave dis differently? Just don't. Who knows? Apparently, scientifically, it's something to do with something called surface tension. <gasps> oh, I feel like I'm back at there school now. Oh, I mean, I dear. can't tell you what that means or how that makes works, but I can just tell you that's what it means. It's something to do with the way that water forms droplets. There you are. So <sighs> yeah. technical. That, that's all I can tell you. That's about mm. as far as it goes. But yeah, they, all we need to know is they're different. So can you see, it didn't extend all the way up there. So all we need to do just to release this is we just need to take a little pair of snippy scissors and just complete that cut. Can you see, it's not quite a corner, it's on the edge. It could be a corner, or it could be perhaps four corners. But how about if you do exactly the same technique on the other side, so running it back through our die cutting machine once again, so we've got two edges. So it's not really a corner at all onto there. So it's just gonna give you a different effect. Really, really easy to create that, literally just two cuts. Then nice. all I'd be doing, now the background is still a little bit wet. You can see the pearlescence is starting to shine through, but it is a little bit wet on that. So we're not going to glue this down. We'll just lay it out and then we can dry it. We can stick it even a little bit later when it's dry. So all I'd do is I'd take this piece and I've added some foam tape just to the back, just so that it's going to really stand proud from that background and it's going to give us this drop shadow underneath this element which makes it really pop if we were to stick it flat we wouldn't have the drop shadow but by having it raised up it allows these pieces to cast that shadow underneath which makes it really stand out then i've taken a sentiment now this is from the um, creative expressions vintage botanicals collection we've got in the show and you can just add that onto the center really really easily like so you could be inking the edges of that you could be adding perhaps your metallic paint markers to the edges but a really really quick and easy and simple card to create just two cuts a background and a sentiment and it gives you quite a striking design onto your cards just like so so how easy was that to create Beautiful. really really easy really, you could really be gorgeous. doing that with any of your dies within the collection create a background cut it once or twice sentiment job done brilliant would you like to get ready for demo of the yeah, show absolutely. Lily? And, uh, i'll just recap what we've got again in here uh, so you've got different um designs you've got your corners in here remember uh, you've got the rose corner uh, you've also got your um forget me not corner the uh then the daisy bouquet edger which is that one just there we've also got the iris edger the crocus edger uh, you've got your Clematis, clematis. Cle clema clematis? Clematis. Clematis. Cle clematis. 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 I can't clematis. say it, obviously. The jasmine edger. And then your wisteria edger as well. Clematis, is that how you say clematis it? Clematis or clematis? Brilliant. Tomato, um, I, I'm tomato. At, um, Charlotte's like, what, what are you looking at? Oh, are you? What are you looking at? Oh, there's been a delivery, Charlotte. That's what I was looking at. Someone's just delivered some boxes for us, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, don't know what's in them. Looks like goodies. Jake's not there. Oh, who knows where he is? I'm not sure. Just some random man coming off the street. So, oh, Jake's here now. He's, he's back. Fear not. He's going to see them off. Uh, it was a delivery, Jake. He's put it on the side. There, look. Those boxes. There you go. Anyway, breaking that fourth wall for you there. Right, demo of the show then, uh, Lily. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple which we've not stuck down. So I'm just laying them out again for you so we can just have a little look. But here we go. So we've got four to choose from. So we've got our first one that we did, which was our, um, oh 
I was going to call it Vintage Botanicals then, pigment ink stencils, but we did use the stamp from the Vintage Botanicals uh, as well. So that's demo number one. Demo number two, we used the Fuzzy Friends with the pearlescent watercolour inks and also the intense pigment stains. Demo number three was the Vintage Botanicals. Now it's not stuck down, but that you get sort of the idea from that one. And then demo, oh, I've nearly forgotten one. Demo number four is our pearl tints and our pop-up. Love that. And then demo number five is a really quick and simple one we've just done, which is our um, floral corners and edges. Brilliant. Uh, clum, 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 clumatis. What do I call it? Boy, how do we say it? Clematis. Is that clematis. how we say it? Or clematis. Not, definitely not clematis, Definitely not apparently. that one. Sounds like something you need an ointment for, doesn't it? Anyway, one, two, three, four, or five, uh, you let us know uh, in the comments. Crafters TV over on Facebook, Crafts Companion uh, over on YouTube. Uh, let's whiz through some of the best-selling items uh, that you've seen in the show so far today. 34.90 or 46.90 if you want to go for these uh, amazing 7x7 background stencils. Lots in there uh, for you, which is brilliant. Great value uh, as well is what you've got there. You can get elegant trellis, the love part, scattered foliage, cute florals, abstract swells, rosebud floral, the beautiful butterflies, and the polka dots as well in there. Next slide, please. There we go. Floral corners is the next one. You've just seen these. Your corners and edges in here for you. Eight different dies come in there for you. Uh, you've got your... I'm not going to go for the names again because Charlotte will tell me off. £64 or $92 if you want to get your whole hands on those as a Platinum member. We also have the pop-outs available on the show as well. These are awesome. Really lovely sort of mix of uh, modern yet wistful designs in here. And I think to get five of those for that price is a really, really great deal. If you want a bit of fun, then this next item is awesome. It's a Fuzzy Friends clear stamp collection. Four different designs in there. Three animals and a floral for you. £22 or $32 if you want to get your hands on that. We also had the Vintage Botanicals on the show, uh, 80 elements in here, 68.79 or 101.09. Uh, make sure you're using uh, your discounts there as well, uh, if you want to get those. Right, uh, here's the Metallic Liquid Ink Collection for you, uh, which is brilliant. Again, uh, eight awesome colours in here. You've got Antique Bronze, Pewter, Burnished Copper, Ancient Bronze, Aged Copper, Tarnished Silver, Vintage Satin, and of course the Antique Pearl in there as well. We also had the Reinkers for you, uh, seven rainbow colours. You've got Cherry Red, Nectarine, Sunshine, Camo Green, True Blue, Damson, and also the Frost Pink in there as well. The acrylic markers are available for you on the show in here. You get a full collection. You've got the bright jewels, the pastels, and the essentials. And these are brilliant. They go into a whole host of different card stocks, as well as things like uh, denims and materials, um, wood, the, uh, MDF. They will also go into things like glass and earthenware and stoneware as well. Um, right, uh, also, oh, we're going to come back, we're going to have a little look again at the watercolour inks, because I know uh, these have been very, very busy, and I, I think it, it's clear to see that they're one of Lily's absolute favourites in the show as well, so uh, we're going to go back to those and have a look at them. A few different colour uh, options for you, definitely pop over to the website and have a look at all of them that are there, 4 or 7 99 each. I just can't get over that delivery system. I was, honestly, you should have seen me as like a confused toddler pressing the buttons trying to work out what was going on there with these, Lily. <laughs> Yeah, I could see out the corner of my eye. I was thinking <laughs> Joe's trying to work it out, but it's honestly, it's so simple. Once you know how, it's like, wow, why didn't we think of that? It's absolutely brilliant. So you get these 20 mil bottles and not only do they look really, really pretty on your craft shelves, but they're actually really, really useful and really clever. So we've got this bu little button on the top. All we do is press that. You can press it once for a few times, totally up to you. Then just screw your lid off. And then can you see we've got this pipette? And by pressing that button initially, that's just gonna fill our pipette full of ink. Then when we want to dispense this ink, so into our palette, I'm gonna call it a palette then, <laughs> a palette. Just palette. press that button again. It's uh, catching, it's isn't it? Palette, and that'll just dispense that ink into there. So when it's closed, push your button to pick up the ink into your pipette. When you want to dispense it, take your lid off and press your button again, and that's just going to dispense the ink. So, so easy to use, but these are fabulous. You can be creating your backgrounds like we have in the show. So you can be creating pearly backgrounds really, really easily, mopping up bits like we did there. You can be painting with them like we also did earlier in the show. So you can paint with them really, really easily for a lovely sparkly pearlescent finish. 
so much you can do with them mix them in perhaps into your texture paste add them through your stencils absolutely fabulous products but so so easy to use with that fab little bottle brilliant let me just um quickly run through the colors for you that you've got on here then uh, this color gives you the best idea of the color on the side here so you've got the uh, radiant orchid which is up in there we also then have a uh, holly green i'll just show the underside as well look at all of that that pearlescent powder that you've got mm. in there it's going to give you that wonderful shine that's a holly green but we've also got the cerulean blue which is this one just there uh, you've then got your ray of sunshine uh, which is this one here again you can see that little colour swatch there on the side this one is your red sunset again a really beautiful lustrous colour there and last but no means least we've got the lemon glacier there as well they're colours for you 4 to, 425 or 799 if you want to get your hands on those ones uh winner of the card of the show is number Ooh. four lily number four the which popper oh interesting so we've got our outside that we did with the pearl tints then we've got our pop-up surprise yeah Ta -da. fabulous well how easy was that one to create i'm so glad you loved that but think a little bit different isn't it <laughs> really really gorgeous right that'll go into the demo of the day don't forget as well 11th day of craftmas means that uh, every order over 10 pounds or 20 dollars will receive crafters inspiration edition one someone was letting me know oh, panda craft says they bought uh, edition two, issue mm -hmm. two, and because that was over ten pounds, actually got issue one free of charge. So they <gasps> bought the number two oh. and got the one for free as well. So you got the whole collection. That is what I'm all about. That is crafty, clever shopping. That, that is, is proper fabulous. savvy shopping. But then I you complete, love that. you've completed your collection. So by the time number three comes around, you're all set, aren't you? Because yeah, you don't want a go. gap. You don't want a gap at all in your crafty stash. You want it all. You all want the inspiration. All of it. Full set syndrome. You've got the magazine mm. in there. Uh, you've also then got all the hardware in there. Uh, loads of papers in here for you as well. And they all store beautifully uh, in this uh, particular uh, little binder as well. So make sure you grab those. I'm going to have to give you a bit of a warning uh, about the later Dreamy show. Everything is in stock at the moment. There's been no sellouts currently, but that is not going to be the case because you've got just over two hours until we bring you that show a lot of stuff is half gone we haven't actually even got to the show yet um so if there's definitely things that you want that you don't want to risk selling out i would say as soon as this show's ends it ends in a moment go and have a little look at the show pick what you want because i think we will be not in the fortunate position to have everything in stock i would say very soon when we go to air i'm really looking forward to that show lily what have you got planned oh, for us i am so excited for this show well we're gonna have to see what we've got left because you guys are selling us out left right and center but i'm not surprised they're fab products we've got brilliant the wishing well definitely take a look at that but we're going to be showing you how you put the kits together how easy they are to work with we're going to be taking it back to basics perhaps you are looking at your mdf for the very very first time you're thinking i've got a little bit of time off over christmas perhaps the grandkids are going to be around you want projects to do with them you want something a little bit different this is going to be perfect mdf going to be absolute cracker of a show but we're just going to be having lots and lots of fun and our very own carol from the dreamies is going to mm. be joining us as well via skype so super super excited to have her on the show as well it's just yeah. going to be great fun Can't it's going wait. to be a lot of fun i uh, make sure you come back and join us at that 7 p.m in the uk 2 p.m east coast at 11 a.m if you are over on the west west on the west coast on the west coast on the west coast so i went very south african there for a moment <laughs> or you're on the east coast or on the west coast uh, yes, come and join us. <laughs> uh, you've got two hours to do what you need to do uh, and we'll see you back here uh, for that amazing Dreamies Craft House. Let me tell you for why. Goodbye.